Okay, you all good? Let's do it. Hello and welcome to the B2C Lead Generation Podcast. Welcome back to the B2C Lead Generation Podcast. My name is Daniel Hopewell here with Simon Delaney and this is episode 52, Get Granular With Your Tracking. Um, Sam, I think most people listening to this will have a rough idea of what we mean by that. Um, but for clarity, and just so we're all on the same page, can you explain what you mean when we say granular um, with your tracking and also why it's important? So tracking at a granular level ultimately leads to better decisions. So this is um, where you're knowing exactly where your leads have come from, um, why they're performing what makes them perform and it's important because it means that you uh, are running the lead generation on the KPIs or the targets, the measurements that are important to you, um, not necessarily important to where the leads are coming from. And that expression, you know, getting, getting granular, I suppose, is a little kind of vague, like how granular can you get, I guess is what I'm trying to ask. Do you know what I mean? Like that can, some people that might be relative. So how, how granular can and should you go? I mean, ultimately go as granular as you possibly can. And by that, I mean, let's imagine you have different types of traffic coming to you. So it could be you're working with affiliates, um, you have PPC leads, and these are all being driven by external agencies or lead generators. So a lead buyer has all this data coming in. And if you can track exactly the keyword that's being driven, the ad that's being shown, the incentive that's being used, the specific email, the subsource, the sub 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 source, absolutely everything, um, you can really drill down into exactly what is performing and what isn't. Um, and the reason you do that and the benefits in the practical terms are, I've worked with loads of lead buyers in the past um, where what they do is track at a sort of channel level or a type. So what they'll say is, okay, we've got two ads running, one that says this and one that says that. Um, and we're just going to lump them together and say that's like Facebook leads or this is how Coreg leads perform when it's coming from, you know, 40 different suppliers or this is how affiliate leads perform when it's coming from 50 different subsources that aren't being tracked. Um, and so what happens is you might see like overall low performance, but if you actually dig down into it, you could see, um, see some vast differences. Yeah, I think, um, I think that makes, makes sense. Isn't it? Really, the more, essentially the more information you have on something, the better decisions you can make. Um, mm. I think it's important, but also like you say, in practical terms, like what that leads to, I think is also equally as important. Well, yeah, so in practical terms, it's how you unlock sales, really. I mean, that's really what you're going for, um, is really drilling down into the specific, like, granular moments that are leading to the sales and what they look like. And then you know where to place your budget. Um, you know, you know absolutely everything. And it opens up this transparency as well in terms of uh, exactly how your um, procurement of leads is happening. Yeah, I think that's nice to see. We, we, we talk about leads all the time, but I think it's it bears repeating that it is all about bringing it back to sales, especially if you're a lead buyer and company buying leads listening to this. That's ultimately what they care about, right? Like it's the sales. So I think it, it's nice to bring it back around to that. Um, what I want to ask though is, again, just like maybe not in practical terms, but in terms of how it happens, like how do you actually do this? Like how do you get granular? And also, just to sort of show the reverse, the other side of it, what happens if you don't track sales? What are the kind of the negatives there, the costs of this? Mm. So how you practically do it is, um, I mean, you, you need a system and whether, you know, I mean, you could do it manually on a spreadsheet or something, I guess, um, but you need a way of identifying um, the ad that's driven a lead, the keyword that's driven a lead, a specific email, a specific source or subsource, and all of that needs to be able to line up so that you can run a report and say, okay, this is where this particular ad or this particular subsource is over-indexing 
um, on the sales in comparison to other things. So what you might then do is either remove the other sources or remove the other ads or whatever, and then put more budget behind that or follow up with more places like that that you can then put your budget in. Um, and the dangers of not doing, um, it sort of comes back to a, a mantra that we've repeated several times. So if you're buying leads in from external sources, there's two things at play, right? So you've got the leads coming in and what you're wanting to measure is the sales. But what the person sending you the leads, if you're not tracking this at a granular level, is measuring is how many leads you're buying. So what they're optimizing for is leads and what you're trying to optimize for is sales. So unless you can track exactly where these sales are coming from at a granular level, really what's happening is you're just optimizing for leads. Now that isn't to say that the lead generator or the external entity won't work with you on that, but you have to work with them. Um, I mean, there's another thing that feeds into it that we've covered before, which is feedback loops is, you know, feeding all that information back and doing it in real time. But there's a step before that feedback that happens, which is if you can track that at a granular level, the feedback becomes so much more optimized and you know exactly like what you're doing. It puts you in control effectively, even though the media buying is happening externally and it makes the whole thing transparent. So you need systems in place, you need to be able to create feedback loops and you need to be able to track at a granular level every ad, every keyword, every source, every subsource, um, and have all of that coming into you along with the data of the individual that you're receiving. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think when we do these podcasts, sometimes we talk about subjects that are a little bit controversial and maybe people disagree with, and um, yeah, that happens. And, and then sometimes it's a case of maybe, I don't say spell out the obvious, because it's not obvious, but I don't think anyone will be listening and thinking, I don't want to know what's happening on a granular level, but I think some people might listen and think, oh, maybe I'm not giving this enough thought or maybe I'm not going granular enough. And like you said, like you've listed all the reasons why they should be doing. So if they listen to this and thinking, you know what, I can go more granular. I can get more information. I can take better control um, of my buying leads or whatever um, by analyzing this stuff. And hopefully people listening will see the benefits of that. And I don't want to say you've persuaded them because we're not trying to persuade them of anything. We just try to simply... Um, put forward the idea and yeah hopefully people listening will agree well there's there's two sides to this right so if you're a lead generator listening to this and you're buying leads on like platforms like facebook or native or um ppc or even affiliates you track this right like i we all know they track it and you know i've generated leads and this is exactly what you track because you want to um optimize your budget for where the leads are going to come from so all we're talking about is lead buyers need to be doing the same sort of thing. Now, they're clearly not generating their own leads for a reason. They don't have the resources or, you know, in-house. So maybe they are and they're just outsourcing some of it. But what happens when the lead generator um, is doing it without you feeding back or you tracking at a granular level as well? Is they're just doing that. They're optimizing for the leads that you're going to buy. So the only way to optimize for sales, which is what the lead buyer or the brand wants, is to track the same thing at a granular level and feed that information back. And this gives this transparency that we mentioned again, it gives this control and effectively you're optimizing the lead generation to become sales rather than leads. And that's really what it is about. And it's just, you need mechanisms in place um, to be able to track all of that. Cause you don't wanna be having to like manually dick around with spreadsheets or manually run reports so that all this information comes at like the end of the month after a, you know 10,000 leads have already been generated and you've realized like, oh, if we'd have been tracking this in real time, we'd have shifted our budget completely. So you, the tracking has to happen at a granular level constantly and you have to be able to act on that. Because if you don't, every moment that passes that you don't is just wasted budget potentially. Yeah, that was uh, episode 52 get granular with your tracking. Thanks for listening to the B2C Lead Generation Podcast. Be sure to hit subscribe to hear more from those at the very cutting edge of the lead gen world.